In this unit, we're going to talk about conjugated systems or delocalized pi systems. These are molecules or groups within molecules that contain atoms that are sp or sp2 hybridized such that there are unhybridized p orbitals on these atoms that can line up in a side-on fashion. And this may remind you of pi bonding from your intramolecular chemistry courses. Essentially, conjugated systems have extended pi bonding, so they exhibit electron delocalization. They always have alternative resonance forms. Some have many alternative resonance forms. And their molecular orbitals, their pi molecular orbitals, are interesting as well. We can interpret their pi molecular orbitals to draw inferences, for example, about how they react, connecting structure to reactivity. So we'll look at that in this unit. And ultimately, where we're going is a deep dive into what's called aromaticity. Aromaticity shows up when you take the ends of a conjugated system and link them together to create a cyclic pi system. So for example, benzene, one of the most famous molecules in all of organic chemistry, is sort of the prototypical aromatic compound. We'll learn how to recognize these and move into their reactivity in a future chapter. Our learning objectives for this unit, first of all, we're focused on drawing and recognizing resonance forms of conjugated systems, including dienes, allyl systems, we'll take a deep dive into allylic intermediates, cations, anions, and radicals, and other kinds of conjugated systems, for, the, for example, those incorporating heteroatoms. We'll take a look at the conformational dynamics of conjugated dienes. A lot of conjugated systems have alternating single and double bonds, and those single bonds have some interesting conformational aspects, and so we'll explore those a little bit. We're going to learn to interpret the pi molecular orbitals of conjugated systems, so we're not going to draw these from scratch generally. I'll give you a couple of tips for the HOMO and LUMO of conjugated dienes, but generally we're not going to draw these from scratch. We're going to use a computer to calculate them and interpret their energies and shapes to make inferences about reactivity and structure. And we're going to learn to recognize what are called electron donating groups and electron withdrawing groups. And these are hugely important functional groups that either push electron density into conjugated systems or pull electron density out of conjugated systems and through those actions exert influences on reactivity, both where reactions take place within organic molecules and how quickly they take place, the reaction rate. And so in learning objective five here, we'll essentially learn to apply electron donating and withdrawing groups, looking at their effects on the energies of the HOMO and LUMO of a conjugated system and the relative strengths of those molecules as nucleophiles or electrophiles. And finally, we'll look at that HOMO-LUMO energy gap and see how it relates to, for example, the emergence of color in long conjugated polyenes. And these are molecules like beta carotene and retinol and other long conjugated systems, conjugated polymers, where the absorption of light becomes a very important process, visible light in particular. Let's start with what we mean by a conjugated system, and in particular, a conjugated diene. On this slide, there, we see three different ways to sort of arrange double bonds within a hydrocarbon molecule. On the left here, we have what's called an isolated diene. An isolated diene is one in which we have two carbon-carbon double bonds that are separated by an sp3 hybridized atom. Notice that in the center of this molecule, there's an sp3 hybridized carbon. This is not a conjugated molecule because of that tetrahedral sp3 hybridized carbon in the center. And we can think about this molecule as basically just two alkenes in one molecule, right? Everything you know about alkenes already applies to this molecule here. In the middle here, we have what's called a cumulated diene, and the hallmark of a cumulated diene is that two carbon-carbon double bonds are sharing a central carbon. So where you see this black dot in the middle, there's actually a carbon there. That carbon has sp hybridization, and this particular structure with two carbon-carbon double bonds sharing a central atom is known as an allene. Cumulated dienes have some interesting aspects that we won't dig into in particular, but they're not really conjugated because these two double bonds are actually at right angles to each other if you look at the pi orbitals associated with those two double bonds. Finally, here we have what is a bona fide conjugated diene, buto one 3 Diene. And notice it's characterized by two double bonds separated by a single bond. This creates a situation where all four atoms in this molecule have sp2 hybridization. And this is worth checking on your own. Just to check it, we can draw sort of little nubs here to indicate where the hydrogens are located. And if you do that, you'll see that each carbon has 
three electron pair domains, three electron domains, and that corresponds to sp2 hybridization. Because of that hybridization, there are unhybridized p orbitals on each of the carbons, and those p orbitals are lined up in such a way that they can overlap in a side-by-side -side fashion. So the electrons in these two double bonds are really delocalized over all four atoms, and this is the hallmark of a conjugated system. And when those uh, atoms over which the electrons are delocalized are carbons, it's known as a conjugated diene. So we've got the hallmark of conjugation here, a contiguous array of 2p orbitals. We can think of those as unhybridized 2p uh, orbitals left behind, quote unquote, after the sp2 hybridization, such that they can overlap and electrons are delocalized over all four atoms. So we've got a delocalized electron situation on our hands here, and that's reminiscent of resonance. So we're going to be thinking a lot about resonance as we learn to recognize conjugated systems in molecules.